the McDonald. The referee spotted that, called it back, and McGrillen was sent off. Wayne Foster got involved with McDonald, his ex-teammate as well. But Jim Fleming, perhaps, spotting this pretty soft, really, handbags at 20 paces. Nothing compared to the Battle of Brockville last time round when three were sent off. McGrillen's off this time, and Falkirk really with it all to do. Down to 10 men, into the second half now, and the second goal for Murder McLeod's men. And this time is David Moss. 2-0 to Thistle, and that's the strike that counts. Moss, who works as an insurance man, gets his third goal in two games, and he's already proving to be a great signing. Well, a route one goal really killed off Falkirk. Charlie Adams picked up there in the long clearance by Jared Sterling, and Adams goes all the way himself, and he finishes well. Past Craig Nelson, 3-0 Thistle. And that's Adams' second strike of the game, his third of the season, and he ensures that Martin McLeod's men get three wins on the trot. Thistle rising again. <laughs> Thistle had the best of the first half chances. Gareth Evans sent through Charlie Adams. He then plays catch me if you can with David Wiley. And that's surely a chance for Jared Sterling, but the goalie off his line wasn't punished. Well, he comes off his line again here now for some more wacky races with Charlie Adams. Adams gets past him. Surely he must punish the goalkeeper this time. But no, the chance is gone. And that's a bad one for Thistle. Murder McLeod needs better finishing than that. Well, the sad truth is that both goalkeepers could have popped out and nipped down the gas cube load to do their Christmas shopping in Glasgow City Centre during this one because they had almost nothing to deal with. At least on this occasion, Steve Maskery gets it in target. But it ended 0-0, and by all accounts, that scoreline flattered the game. I don't think there's going to be a lot of goals in. Certainly a different case here, not a boring game at Love Street. Loads of goals coming up. Billy McDonald there, not far away from getting Thistle's first goal in over a month. On that same day when Thistle got the goal, Saints got their last point. Something had to give today. Junior Mendes wasn't far away that time. Murder McLeod's men were the first ones to break their duck. Derek McWilliams got away from Jim Dick. And Evans evades the tackle from McWhirter, and it's 1-0 the Jags. Gareth Evans pokes home his 10th goal since joining up at Four Hill from Hibbs. A Derek McWilliams cross also set up Thistle's second goal with help from Martin Baker's clearance. David Moss got the end of that and it's 2-0. Great goal and the Thistle fans enjoy a great volley by David Moss. Combe had no chance as that whizzed into the bottom corner. Tony Fitzpatrick must have done his job at half-time. It certainly worked for Mark Yardley, whatever it was. How's that for a finish? Saints pull one back. Mark Yardley picks the ball out of the net after his strike. He's the man taking this game by the scruff of the neck for Saints. Thunderous strike, nasty bounce, and Hillcoat's beaten. Well, the game really hinged on this couple of minutes. A mistake there by Callum Milne lets in Yardley again. And what do you know? Two goals in two minutes for Yardley. St Mirren 2, Thistle 2. Watson set him up. Nasty deflection. Off Mill into the back of the net. Yardley does it again for Saints. The completed comeback of the year in the 71st minute. McLaughlin's header finished off there by Paul Fennick. The Canadian grabs goal number three and it's three points for the Saints. A terrible defensive goal for the Jags. Just about the whole team in the six yard box. But Fennick still got through, 3-2. And we almost get goal number six. Derek McWilliams' header, great save by Alan Combe. Saves the three points for the Paisley men. The ability at the club is fantastic. And... Thistle's promotion ambitions have been thwarted recently, while cash-strapped Dundee have rallied. The Taysiders took the lead at Fur Hill in the 16th minute, that's Adamchuk who picks out Ian Anderson. And how about that for a finish? Oh yes, was right. The 19-year-old evading Milne's challenge to float a beautiful opener past Hillcote. 
Murdoch McLeod's men did have a chance to pull level though. Derek McWilliams inches away there. Into the second half, teenager Anderson could have grabbed his second after this lung-bursting run, which saw him cover half of the field. Some power in the shot. Then Lee Power, Dens Park's new signing, and he can pack a drive too. Thistle came right back into this match though. Jim Duffy's men struggled to clear their lines, and that contributed to Derek McWilliams' shot, cannoning off Robbie Rayside's arm. You feel sorry for the Dundee defender. He couldn't really get out the road of that. Jared Sterling knocked in the penalty kick. One each, and Thistle kept at it now. Gareth Evans with the header, a good save from Billy Thompson. And then Thistle went ahead. Evans again, this time at the far post, and it's home. 2-1 Thistle. The fight back was complete. Thompson had no chance of keeping that one out. Or was the fight back complete? Paul Tosh had other ideas. 2-2, Hillcoat didn't see it, and Dundee had fought back to level it. A great strike, and that's how it finished. Yeah, share of the points there at Firhill, but not a bad game, I suppose. OK, let's take a look now at the rest of tomorrow's fixtures in the Bells Scottish Leagues. That's how the First Division looks right now. St Johnson on 44 points. What a season they're having. What a dismal season East Fife are having. Tomorrow's fixtures, Partick Thistle play Airdrie. It's Clyde Banks and Johnson, Dundee East. On to Far Hill now, where Murder McLeod's Thistle were looking to take something off the second bottom, Sterling Albion. Jared Sterling, unlucky there for the Jags. Well, he did well there, but look at this dreadful pass back here by Jared Sterling. Stuart McLaren picks it up, and it's 1 0 Sterling Albion. And what about this for a Skippy impersonation? 37 minutes gone, dreadful mistake there, and McLaren slots it past Hillcoat. Tell you what, the little kangaroo the day he did that. Well, Thistle coming forward now in the second half. Andy Lyons there, pulling off a great save by Mark McGowan. Well, Thistle desperate to get something from this game, and they got it when Steve Maskey was fouled by Neil Bennett. Penalty kick, George Clyde gives it. And Jared Sterling made amends for that fluff in the first half. And it finished. Thistle won, Sterling Albion won. Two points lost, though, for Murdo's men. Yeah, Murdo wants them to win at home, obviously. Well, that's about it for this shortened edition of Scott's... On to Capelo now with Partick Thistle's Gerard Sterling lining up the free kick there. And the young defender almost added to his remarkable goals total. Similar circumstances now, but this time Sterling hits the back of the net. After eight minutes, it's Morton nil, Partick Thistle one. Gerard Sterling's ninth goal of the season. Well, Murdoch McLeod's men had most of the first half pressure, but Morton and Alan Mahood still found their way through on Hillcoat's goal. That was unlucky. Well, after 25 minutes, Morton pulled level. The ball fired into the penalty box and touched over the line there by Warren Hawk. Morton won, Partick Thistle won. Thistle defence calling for a handball, but really they've only got themselves to blame. They should get in the road of that one. Warren Hawk takes his chance. Morton were level for just nine minutes. Referee Les Mottram weighs play on there after the foul on Gareth Evans. Pass through to David Moss and he's passed the goalkeeper. 2-1 to the Jags. Steve Maskey pokes the ball through, Moss is on side, and he takes his chance well. Well, the Greek side trailing 2-1 going into the second half, almost levelling here, Paul Blair to John Anderson. And that's the second time Morton have hit the metal in this game. Hopes that a recovering dash now as Davy Farrell's free kick finds its way to Stephen Doherty. And that's a good finish for the substitute. Nine minutes from time, the 3-1 victory secured by Doherty. Thistle now move up to third spot in Division 1. I think now we've lost twice in the last 16 matches, so it's a reasonable run. Earlier on, it was too many draws that was keeping us in the pack, but if we can produce results like we did today, I'm sure that'll get us up to be a challenging side. OK, time for another short break. Next up, it's a forum. We're back in a couple of minutes. ...in some much-needed transfer cash. Tomorrow, they line up against the man who sentenced them to their miserable existence in Division 1. 
Whenever a club needed a cup run, it's Thistle. They've been starved of any real revenue in the nine months since they were relegated. Crowds are down, but they're still paying out premier wages. They have nothing to spend, so a few cup games would delight the accountant. It's a real struggle against the odds. We know we've got a, a small squad. Even coming for the Motherwell game, we've, we're struggling to get a 14-man pool put together. Uh, but the attitude of each and every player at Far Hill has been great this season. And as long as I can get the, the 11 strongest on the park, uh, I'm, I'm quite happy. One of those is high-scoring fullback Jared Sterling, a target for a number of clubs, including Liverpool. Thistle want over £300,000 for the 20-year-old. I'm surprised I've stayed in the team and that, but I've been playing well and the gap has kept me in. Just as long as I keep playing well this season, I don't get put out. I mean, you've got a remarkable goals tally as well, nine goals, and of course you're a full-back. I mean, how do you manage to score so many? Well, they've all come from dead ball situations, and I'm happy to get on the end of the score. And his manager could rocket a ball into the net too in his playing days. He does a good shot when he sees one. Rangers have got George Alberts, but I think Jerry hits the ball just as sweet as, as he does. And I think he scored more goals this season than him as well. Nine goals from left backs, it's a good return. Thistle's problems began when they lost the playoff to Dundee United and a goal by Motherwell's recent signing Owen Coyle. The striker who scored three goals in three games for his new side is ready for a hot reception. I think, you know, Thistle were 20 seconds from, from staying in the Premier League when we got the equaliser to force an extra time. Fortunately enough, I was able to get the winner, so, uh, you know, I don't think it was too fond memories of it. We have plenty of goals at McDermott Park, but sadly not here at Fur Hill. 35 minutes were played before either keeper was called into action. Saints Alan Combs saving there from Thistles, Andy Lyons. Combs opposite number, John Hillcoat had to look sharp a few minutes later. Mark Yardley testing him from Brian Smith's cross. So a goalless at half time and chances were also few and far between in the second 45. Derek McWilliams had one of the opportunities to break the deadlock. That wasn't far away. The best chance of the match fell to Thistle's young striker, Charlie Adams. Farrell's free kick knocked on by Moss, and Charlie should stick to the modelling. That wasn't pretty. Well, Thistle had a great chance to take all three points in the dying seconds. Farrell again a supplier. This time it was David Moss. That's a shocking miss. Thistle should have won it with that one. Instead, it's their 11th throw of the season. So, St Johnson's lead at the top of Division 1 is cut to 13 points after that draw against Airdrie. Dundee remain in the playoff spot, three points ahead of Thistle. Airdrie and St Mirren are still in a position to challenge for that second spot. Proved to be a handy day for assistant referees. David Farrell's hopeful ball into the box, controlled somewhat illegally by Burns defender Andy Gray. The decision once again after consultation, a penalty to Thistle. Harsh or otherwise, Jared Sterling making no mistake from the spot. 1-0 to the Jags. This game then turned into the Kevin McAllister show as the Brockville favourite showed just why Alex Totten brought him back from Hibernian. John Hillcott unsighted on McAllister's curling shot. The wee man well pleased with the equaliser. Ideally placed into the bottom corner. Unfortunately for Murdo McLeod's side, the man they call Crunchy wasn't finished just yet. And his second strike brilliantly dispatched and quickly followed by a Robbie Fowler impression into the back of the net. I went for the home side, but as the promotion drive too late in the day, it finished 2-1 Falkirk. OK, so that's the way the Bells' first division stands this evening. St Johnson's defeat means their lead is cut to 10 points. Dundee's still holding on in that second playoff place. Two points ahead of St Mirren. Thistle are not out of it either in fourth spot. Well, Stuart, Alec, what, what did you make of those scenes? That, uh... That's Tommy Burns watching there at the top of your picture. And at the bottom left, it's Roy Evans, the Liverpool manager, watching this young man here, Ricky Gillis. He could be heading, of course, to Anfield. Well, St Mirren took the lead in this game after 11 minutes. The header there from Stephen McGarry, put into his own net by Thistle defender Greg Watson. It's just not been Thistle's season, has it? The header down by the 17-year-old McGarry, who's being lined up as Gillis' replacement, and the defender could only watch in agony. 
Now, 2-0 followed shortly after that. Another blunder at the back there, and Stuart Munro puts the ball in the back of the net for St Mirren. The former Rangers man gets a goal in his last game for St Mirren. 2-0 attended. Here